Good evening everyone. Welcome back, to part 2 of my real life series, where I explain how I became a believer, in the paranormal. In today's episode, I will tell you the story, of what my life was like, growing up in a haunted house. Every story you are about to hear, is 100% true. I will be as open, and honest as I can, throughout this entire series. So sit back, relax, and turn off all the lights, as you enjoy today's video. The year is 1999, and my parents built the home I would grow up in, until I moved out to attend college. It was a 3,000 square foot, beautiful home. Tall ceilings in every room, and a large fireplace in the living room that was surrounded by thick molding, and a decent sized mantle. This detail will be important for a video, later on in the series. I shared this house, with my twin brother, my sister, who is about six years younger than me, and my two parents. Whenever we first moved into our new home, there was nothing out of the ordinary. As you can imagine, we were excited to be moving into such a beautiful home, in a great neighborhood that had plenty of kids my age, to become friends with. For the first few years living there, everything was perfect. But as I got older, the veil of childhood naiveness, started to lift. Strange things would happen occasionally, around the house. Small things, at first. The television in the kitchen, would turn on in the middle of the night at full volume. Waking up everyone in the house, until someone got out of bed, to turn it off. Eventually, this would happen so often, that we would just unplug it, before going to bed. My father would tell us, that the television was malfunctioning, and not to worry about it. A few years go by, without anything strange happening, around the house. In August of 2005, Hurricane Katrina hit the coast of Louisiana. The governor of Louisiana said today that she is considering the remarkable step of evacuating the remaining residents of New Orleans. A water main broke, leaving New Orleans without drinking water. And the flooding here is getting worse after waters from Lake Pontchartrain broke through a levee. If ever the cavalry was needed, it is now and it is in New Orleans. An Army National Guard helicopter today rescued people from rooftops, fragile islands in the floodwaters. It was the Coast Guard to the rescue for others, swinging axes to reach people trapped in attics. In one submerged neighborhood, they plucked people to safety one by one with a helicopter-borne basket. An air-sea rescue in the heart of urban America. And when you pull back for a wide shot, the scene is nothing short of apocalyptic. 80% of New Orleans, including much of downtown, is underwater. The Big Easy's famous Canal Street, living up to its name. And rising waters will now force officials to evacuate the shelter at the Superdome. The devastation of Hurricane Katrina was deeply felt in our state and across the nation. Homes were completely flooded, buildings were destroyed, and cities were without electricity for weeks. Fortunately, our house did not flood, or receive any permanent damage. We were left without electricity, for about a week and a half. However, we had a gas-powered generator, which would power the refrigerator and a few air conditioning units, to keep the house cool, in the hot and humid, Louisiana climate. During this time without electricity, my siblings and I would play board games, and hide and seek, to pass the time. While playing hide-and-seek, I had my first true paranormal experience, in our new house. At the time, I was sleeping on an inflatable mattress, in the master bedroom, since that was the coldest room in the house at night. I leaned the air mattress, up against the wall, and I slid myself between the narrow opening of the air mattress, and the wall. I was laying on my side, facing the wall. So I couldn't see anything, besides the wall a few inches in front of my face. I could hear my sister, running around the house, checking closets and bedrooms, as she looked for my brother and I, who were hiding. I became more tense, as I could hear her making her way across the house, getting closer to the bedroom where I was hiding. I hear the sound of clothes being moved around in the closet in my brother's room, which was the room nearest to the master bedroom. Hearing her say things like, are you hiding in here? As I'm listening to her search for us, 
I feel a small hand grab my foot, which was slightly sticking out from my hiding spot. The small hand grabs my foot, and shakes it around quickly, as if teasing me like I've been caught. Thinking the game was over, I quickly got up from my hiding spot, to find that the room was completely empty. The door to the master bedroom, which was about 20 feet away, was still shut. At first, I thought my sister was hiding to mess with me, or to maybe scare me. I searched around for her, when I hear her footsteps running towards me. She opens the door, and sees me standing in the middle of my parents' bedroom. She asked why I wasn't playing hide and seek with her. I explained, that the game was over, because she found my hiding spot. She was confused, because she hasn't searched that room yet. Being the older brother, I did not want to freak her out, especially with the sounds of the hurricane outside. We quickly moved on, to play a board game. A few months later, my mom, siblings and I were in the living room, watching TV. We hear the sounds of heavy boots, walking from the back door, towards the kitchen, which was behind us. Thinking it was my dad returning home from work, we shout, hey dad, as we continued to watch TV. A few seconds go by, as we continue to hear the sounds of heavy boot steps walking around behind us. My mom turns around, and sees there's no one there. At this time, we were all confused. I got up, to see my dad's truck was not in the driveway. We looked at one another, with a concerned expression on all of our faces. My mom, wanting to defuse the situation, assured us that he must have come home for a second, before leaving to run to the store. She picked up the phone, and dialed his number. My dad answered a few seconds later. She asked him if he was driving to the store, and to our surprise, he said he was still at work. This sent a shiver down our spines, as we all are certain we heard the loud sound of boots walking across the kitchen. Unfortunately, this was not the last time we would hear footsteps in the home. When I was in high school, my brother and I came home early from our 6 a.m. football workout. After we showered, we grabbed a cold drink and started watching television in the living room. After a few minutes, we hear the sound of footsteps walking down the hallway. This hallway was very long and led to every bedroom in the house. The footsteps became louder, and it sounded like something was being dragged against the wooden floor. Thinking it was our younger sister, just waking up, since it was still early in the morning. It was common for her to wake up, and drag a blanket with her to join us in the living room or kitchen. However, the sounds of the dragging footsteps continued on for minutes. We muted the volume on the TV, and just listened. It sounded like the footsteps were just pacing up and down the long hallway. We started to call out to my sister from the living room, asking if she was okay. After a few seconds of no response, we decided to get up and check on her to make sure everything was fine. As we got closer to the hallway, we heard my brother's bedroom door shut. We asked ourselves, why would our sister go in my brother's room to sleep? We opened his bedroom door, to find the room empty. This didn't make any sense. We quickly walked down to my sister's bedroom, and knocked on the door a few times. After no response, we opened the door and saw that it too was empty. We called our mom, who said that she was at a sleepover the night before. We were home alone. At this point, we knew something was going on in our house. My father was still a skeptic though. Everything he experienced either didn't bother him, or wasn't convincing of the paranormal. One night, that would change. My mom and younger sister were traveling to a different city, to visit with family. My dad, brother and I, were home having a guy's weekend. We spent the day watching football, and barbecuing. That night, around 3 a.m., the sound of a large explosion erupted throughout the house. A shock wave so violent, it shook the headboard of my bed. Absolutely petrified, I was frozen with fear and confusion, as I heard my dad scream out to us to stay in our bedrooms. My dad ran down the hallway, and began to check the entire house. 
After what felt like an eternity, he called out for us to come meet him in the living room. I hesitantly opened my bedroom door, and began walking down the hallway towards the living room. Before I turned the corner into the living room, I prepared myself for the worst case scenario. Did a drunk driver, slam his vehicle through the house? Was someone trying to break in? Did a gas pipeline explode underneath our house? The truth left us with more questions, than answers. The house was in perfect condition. No broken glass, no dismantled doors, there was absolutely nothing, out of the ordinary. We thought maybe something happened next door, to one of our neighbors. My dad walked over, and knocked on our neighbor's door to ask if they heard an explosion too. Slightly annoyed, but concerned, none of our neighbors heard or felt anything. The next day, my dad called around to the nearby power plants and military bases to see if they had any reports during that time. We were left empty-handed, and no logical explanation for what happened. Not long after this event, I graduated from high school and moved out of the house to attend college. I was ready for a fresh start in a new city. But whatever this thing was, it followed me. For the first time, I would come face to face with this entity. In part 3 of this new series, I will go into detail about the shocking events that happened to me, after moving out of the house. I hope you enjoyed part 2 of the real life series. I would love to hear if any of you have encountered the paranormal, so please comment your stories down below. Sleep tight, and remember. If you hear a bump in the night, it's on the witching hour.